In this video, we're talking about letting go and how it can change your life. I wanna kick this off with the story. I promise this is relevant to you, stay with me. A psychology professor walks into class one day holding a glass of water with his arm extended out. He yells at the class, how heavy is this glass? The guesses start coming in, four ounces, six ounces, one pound, to which he says, the absolute weight of this glass isn't what matters. It's not what makes it heavy. It's rather the amount of time I hold on to it. I can do this for two minutes, doesn't feel like much. If I do this for an hour, my muscles start to cramp up. If I do this for a day, a week, I'm unable to think of anything else but the glass because I'm in so much pain and I've held on to it for so long. This glass represents the worries, the burdens, the thoughts, the beliefs, the stories that you carry around day to day. If you hold on to them for a minute, doesn't feel like much. If you think about them for an hour, you'll start to notice the effects. But if you carry them around for days, for weeks, it's gonna paralyze you, unable to move forward until you finally start to let go. And that's what we're talking about in this video. How do you let go in your life? If you rank ordered every single emotion that you feel on a given day, all the bad ones, all the medium ones, and all the good ones that you feel, you'd probably come up with a chart like this. Some refer to this as the Hawkins scale. It also has tons of different names and a lot of spiritual teachers have put their own adaptation on this. At the bottom of your life, you have emotions like shame, guilt, grief, fear, and anger. Do you want to live there? Hell no, that's literally hell on earth. But then you have some okay emotions like pride, courage, willingness, acceptance, before finally raising up to the high ones of where you wanna be in, love, joy, and peace. Another way you can think of this is a stoplight system, red, means stop, change something. Blue means, eh, you might wanna slow down, check in there, but there's nothing too wrong there. And green means, yeah, keep going, good job. So why I'm showing you this is because when we talk about letting go, what we're doing is we're trying to tap in and release anything that's here, that's blocking us from experiencing up here. One analogy that I love and use that I think really drives this home for you is if you think of a hot air balloon. They have a basket, they have a giant hot air balloon. Well, if you notice on the basket to keep it on the ground while they fill it full of hot air, they're sandbags. It's tethered to the ground, isn't it? It doesn't matter how much hot air you fill into the balloon. If it's still tethered on the ground, getting stuck, is that thing going anywhere? No, it's staying where it is. It's staying put. It's getting weighed down. That hot air balloon represents you, your life, your emotions, the 1.0, the 2.0 you. This right here, these are the sandbags. Anything that's causing shame, guilt, grief, fear, anger. It's really hard to feel peace, joy, and love if you're caught in the spiral of feeling anger and shameful, isn't it? And that's why I think a lot of the self-improvement teachings for some people who are in there feel fake. Cause it's like, dude, I'm literally in this state of pure anger or grief. My favorite dog just died and you're telling me to do affirmations and look myself in the mirror and say I'm happy, everything's great? I totally understand that, which is why techniques and methods like we're talking about in this video, accepting what is, processing through it and letting it go. Not trying to change it. Change is really heavy, change is hard, change takes so much effort and a lot of times when you're in the low vibes, that's the last thing you have. You feel drained by this because it's literally weighing you down, isn't it? But letting go, that has a lightness to it. That feels carefree, that feels expressive. So I highly recommend if you are in and feeling any of these, you do the technique and you take it seriously, you're gonna get so much benefit of releasing your sandbags metaphorically and floating up. Let's just say you got out of a relationship, okay? And it was a really messy one uh, that can cause a lot of mixed emotions. There might be parts of you that feels relieved because you're having problems. So you're out of it, but then there's a part of you that's feeling regret and shame, maybe you messed up, maybe they cheated on you and you're internalizing it like, is it me, what's going on here? Maybe it's grief for the person you lost. In other words, you will work through all of these emotions in that order. Unless there's shame or guilt involved in the reason it ended in this example, most people start in grief. Man, I lost them, they broke up with me, they dumped me. Hear all the language we use about breakups, even that breaking up. 
It's taking something away, it's an end. Then you typically move into fear. Am I ever gonna find anyone again? What if that was the one that got away? And there might even be anger. Well, screw them. They don't even know what they're missing. They didn't understand me. They took that the wrong way. I can't believe they would ghost me. And then there's pride. Well, I'm gonna get myself in shape and show them wrong, or I'm gonna go out there and you know make them jealous, or I'm gonna post on my story and they'll see how much fun I'm having because I'm I'm the woman, I'm the man. Before finally there's courage. You know what? Maybe that relationship didn't work out, but I'm down to get another one, at least give it a shot. Before willingness, acceptance. That didn't work out for a reason. There's someone better out there. You find love again, you're in joy, and then there's this inner state of peace that you get to with the whole situation. And what you notice is that people who haven't let go of an ex or a relationship, and they kind of get through here, but they're like still stuck in the maybe I'll show them up, maybe I'll prove them wrong. It's really hard for them to enter these states with someone else, isn't it? Because they haven't let go to that sandbag, to that tether that's holding them back into the 1.0 version of them. You see all these patterns practically in your life of where you need to let go of people, places, things, emotions. You can't let in someone new if you don't let go of the old. Let's take an angle of someone who has negative thoughts. Stinking thinking, they call it, right? Dude, I just can't get out of my head. Here's what I used to do. I used to try to change the thoughts. If I have a thought like I'm going to mess it up, let me just change that with a thought I'm going to succeed. And it's this like one for one battle of, okay, I have a negative thought, I'll replace it with a positive one. A negative thought and replace it with a positive one. Now here's the problem with that. Some research suggests you have over 60,000 thoughts a day. You're gonna do that 60,000 times? Doubt it. Your thoughts are like files on a computer. The computer that is your mind. Well, just like a computer, you don't just have random files on a desktop because then it gets cluttered and messy. What do you do? You store them in folders, don't you? Now here's where we're going with this. Your thoughts are the files inside the folders and the folders are your emotions. So what's very interesting when you study this, you'll have the emotion of anger and it's going to trigger a lot of angry thoughts for you. You might even think about unrelated events in your life that you're angry at different people from different times. Same thing with shame. Shame will trigger all the shameful experiences of your past, not just one specific one. This also can work for the positive, love. You tap into love in a meditation, you ever had this? Or maybe you're in love with someone and it starts to make you love a lot of different aspects of yourself, of life. You see the beauty, not just in the person in front of you, but all around you. The colors are brighter, the food tastes better, music sounds better. So one emotion can change your thoughts. That's why when you're trying to raise your vibe, when you're trying to become the 2.0 you, I always tell my coaching clients, stop trying to change the thoughts, start getting to the roots, the emotions. Letting go is easy. It is not hard. You do not have to overcomplicate this. Like some techniques and people and gurus say, they give you 20 steps and it's just intellectualizing the simple process. You already know how to do it. You used to do it all the time as a kid. Kids throw temper tantrums. They don't pin up their emotions. They let it out right then and there. But then eventually somewhere in life, maybe it's your teachers, your parents, your friend group, the people around you, society, it tells you to keep that in. That's not appropriate. Keep that to yourself. Big girls don't cry. Men gotta tough it up, suck it up, and bottle it up. And there is some truth to that. You shouldn't just be this emotionally fragile person 24 seven and just going everywhere and just releasing and letting go. There is an emotional strength and security that is valuable. Like anything, there is a balance here. But I find that most people are too on the extreme of bottling it up and keeping it in too much. So giving yourself the permission that it's not only okay for you, but it's beneficial. And it's encouraged from your higher self to let go of things, people, beliefs, emotions that are no longer serving you so you can make room for what you want in your life, for the energy, for the relationships, for the vibes you wanna be in, for the opportunities, for the 2.0 you. That is the secret right there that you should pursue. By now you know that it's not necessarily getting rid 
of your negative thoughts, your emotions, your beliefs, your stories. It's about the length of time you've been holding on to them that affects you the most. You also know that letting go is not hard, it's easy. You've done it before in your past, you've just been conditioned out of it. And now you know that letting go of the lower vibes you're able to release and tap into your natural state, which is love, joy, and peace. No one comes out of the womb in a state of anger, fear, guilt, and shame, do they? You might be asking naturally, how do I change my emotional state, especially if I'm stuck down here in the low vibe? And that is where this technique comes into play. Meditations talk about this. Uh, David Hawkins in his famous book, Letting Go, talks about this. Sedona Method has mentioned this. There's all kinds of letting go trainings, but the theory behind them is the exact same. Again, don't overcomplicate this. We're giving you a very simple one you can try out for yourself. It has four steps. Before you begin, you wanna set all your judgments aside. I would recommend turning off your phone so you're not distracted and just carve out 10, 15, 20 minutes, however long you want, it can be five even, for you. The very first thing you're going to do is become aware. Awareness is always your first step. It's very hard to work with things you're unaware of that are in your subconscious or unconscious. You wanna ask yourself, what am I feeling? Is it anxiety about all the 50 things you have to do? Is it guilt about something you said to someone and you're replaying it over in your head? As hard as it is, don't get swept away in the stories and the details about what you're trying to let go of. In the case of our relationship example, do not get swept away in all the text messages and where it should have gone right and what you could have said and how they were wrong in the last conversation you had. As hard as it is, try to just get to the root of the feeling. Step two, acceptance. Sit with this feeling. That's right, as uncomfortable as it is, sit with it. There's a saying, what you resist persists. That a lot of these emotions that you don't want to look at because you feel like if I go into it, it's gonna consume me and it's gonna take over my mental state, my life and my mindset. Ironically, that belief is based in fear. It's fear that you're not gonna be strong enough to overcome it. Fear that you're so fragile, one look at this emotion is going to break you. But what you find is that it's often like a soap bubble. And as soon as you observe it and you just poke your little finger in there, the whole thing evaporates. And ironically, what you're resisting makes it persist, makes it a big deal, makes it real in your life and bigger than it needs to be. I'll give you just a simple example. Like you ever had a conversation that you knew you had to have with someone and it was gonna be kind of difficult? Maybe it's a boss, maybe it's a coworker, maybe it's your partner, and you're just like avoiding it and you're dreading it and you're like having an imaginary conversation with them. You're coming up with rebuttals of what they're gonna say. You're like arguing with yourself in your mind. And then you get the courage to finally bring it up and talk to them about it and it goes like 10 times better smoother, they're open, they have a totally different vibe than you expected. And you're sitting there like, why did I spend weeks, days marinating on that wasted energy? Now let me ask you a question. Do you suffer because you have negative emotions and you're diving so deep into them and you're trying to analyze them and you sit with them? No, you normally suffer because you're imagining them and then you're avoiding them. What that does is it suppresses the grief down. By not looking at the grief and processing through it, you're suppressing it down. It doesn't go away, it doesn't relieve on its own. So you suppress it with drinking. You suppress it with zoning out, with screen time of 10 hours a day. You suppress it by living vicariously through someone else's life instead of building the business for yourself. You're just watching people passively on the internet. You suppress it by having four, five, six beers a night by yourself because it's too uncomfortable for you to sit with the racing thoughts in your head. You suppress processing through the hurt of your last relationship so you find these toxic echo chambers talking about how all men are this way, all women are this way. The only way your life is going to turn around is if you run to it instead of from it. Some people call this surrendering. And I know that's difficult to hear because surrendering typically has waving a white flag, a sign of weakness, of giving up. And that's what I thought getting into this until I, I realized that when you let go of a lot of things, that the battles you don't need to be fighting all your energy goes towards being proactive instead of reactive and scared. So acceptance, step number two. What am I resisting? What do I 
need to run to instead of from? What have I been putting off from looking at? What am I scared to feel? So I've been suppressing it. Some people find it helps to localize where you feel that feeling in your body. Anxiety you'll typically feel in your lungs and your chest getting tighter, contracting, not expanding. Then what's really cool is if you just do the opposite of what that feeling is causing you to do, it normally flips you out of it. What do you find helps people who feel in a state of anxiety, fear, depression, where they're feeling hunched over, expressing, expanding out, movement, exercise, breath work. So you have the awareness, you have the acceptance, now you're ready to feel it fully. Step number three, allow yourself to feel the negative feeling fully. You might be like, well, negative emotions, like, dude, I wanna get out of them. I don't wanna like feel them. But why this works is because when you actually allow yourself to feel this fully, what you do is you jump straight into willingness. I'm willing to feel this, neutrality, almost acceptance. And then it's not a big deal anymore. Nuanced point here is a better goal than letting go of the negative feeling is allowing it, embracing it surrendering to it. It sounds very counter. I thought the goal is to like do this exercise and it works 100% of the time and I can just let it go and go about my life. If you go in with that intention, you have over attachment to it, you're gonna just turn this into some logical thought loop that's very hard for you to do. This is a very emotional, softer experience. And it's not gonna work if you just logically try to analytically, okay, what is the eight step plan to let go? Boom, let go, now I can go about my robotic life. This is all about an emotional transformation and that's hard, it was for me. I was very analytical, I was very logical. I didn't wanna mess with any of this. So it might feel weird at first, but to the degree you can allow yourself to feel, to embrace, to surrender, and then release, is the degree this will work for you and benefit you. And in fact, if it's uncomfortable, you're gonna get the most results out of it because it's that discomfort that says you need to go straight there and you have the most growth, like anything in life. The last step is to release. You're going to sit with this emotion until it runs its course. I have found that when I have the thing I wanna work with, I'm sitting with it, I'm just embracing it, I'm allowing it. When it comes time to release it, you're not putting a time limit on this. You're just sitting with it as long as it needs to be there. It's very useful, I have found, to visualize yourself with your breath, breathing in pure potential, the 2.0 you, and exhaling out the 1.0 you, the feeling you're letting go of, you're releasing it. Envision a color, breathing in this blue teal light into me and breathing out a gray black cloud and just sit there and do that exercise with your breath. Sync this up. So in and out and don't force it. Don't try to make this deeper than it feels. Just let it be. Some of you might be thinking right now, that's it. We're, no, 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 it can't be that simple. I'll give you a few tips here, but if you like this video's topic and you're benefiting from it, like try this technique, um, and you really want some like extra context around it and support, we have a 10 week program and in week three we spend all week just deep diving into how to release, how to detach, how to let go. So if you love what we're talking about here, I'll link down below where you can talk to one of our coaches for free and see if we can genuinely help you. Couple tips here, if this is your first time, things that I've done that have really helped me go deeper and get the most out of this exercise. The first is if you're finding it very hard to sit and process the feeling, you get stuck in a thought loop about all the context around the story, then what I have found really useful is maybe the first few times, take out a journal and write. Do this exercise in written form. Because what you notice is that your mind and your thoughts go much faster and they're much messier than you can write because you're limited to how fast your hand can move. So just the act of slowing down your thoughts helps you think clearer. The second is you might just take five or 10 minutes before you try this exercise to like think about one or two things that you're trying to let go of before you like go through the process of sitting, allowing, feeling, embracing, and releasing. The third, and this is for people who say like, well, I just don't know what I wanna let go of, but I know something's there, I feel a little tense. This is what I tell my metamorphic coaching clients. What's the opposite feeling 
that you want to feel. So if you're feeling depressed, you want to feel expressed. You want to feel joyful. You want to feel alive. I feel guilty and shameful. Well, you want to feel self-acceptance. Now you have an emotion that you want. Ask yourself, what's getting in my way of experiencing that? And you will find some juicy stories, some juicy beliefs, some juicy limiting factors that you got to let go of. Another question is, well, Clark, if I just let go and I just don't care and I'm just easygoing and I'm like not attached, how can I achieve anything? Like, how can I get my goals that I literally want and I'm working towards? If I let go, won't that dull my edge a bit? I used to think that as well. And in fact, it wasn't until I started letting go and detaching that my results finally started showing up in my life. My business took off, my relationships improved, my happiness, my health, everything just started clicking. So I'll link up right here our video on detachment that we did recently. I think it's a perfect follow-up for this video. If you're liking this content and this topic, we spend a whole week in my metamorphic coaching program hitting it deep, going super deep on what it feels like to let go, give you a bunch of different techniques and reframes and questions. And you actually get to work with someone who's expertly trained in this process to let go with you. And I've seen profound effects in my life and in clients in week three. So I'll link down below if you're interested, no pressure. There's more info down there for those of you who are interested. Thank you so much for watching. Stop settling, start living.